and welcome to What's in the Water. I'm Kelly. And I'm Megan. And we're here today at Lebanon Hills Visitor Center. Oftentimes when we visit a lake like Lake McDonough here, we think about the fish and the turtles that we might see or the birds on top going fishing. But you'll be surprised that when you start to look in the water, there's lots of little critters that live there. And those critters are called macroinvertebrates. So they can be found in our waterways, and we're gonna talk about them today and also discuss how we can find them. In addition to being an important part of the food chain and an important part of the lake ecosystem, macroinvertebrates can also tell us a little bit about how healthy our water is. And here in Minnesota, having good, clean, healthy water quality is a really important thing to keep our 10,000 plus lakes and thousands of miles of river and shoreline healthy and clean for us as humans and all the other living things to be able to use. So come along and we're gonna go check out and see what we can find in McDonough and uh, see how healthy it is today. And we're gonna do some dip netting. So I have what is called a dip net. This is specifically for um, looking for aquatic or creatures that live in the lake. Um, if you don't have a net at home, that's okay. You can also just use a bucket to collect your specimens. But the best place to look for um, aquatic and macro invertebrates are um, in areas that have a lot of algal blooms. Um, here we have a lot of lily pads and sticks. It's a little bit more shallow and the water isn't moving as much. And so that allows for um, the critters to have lots of places to hide. Um, if they're out in the open water, they might get eaten by fish. So they want to live in areas where they're a little more protected. So if you're going to do this, look for areas that are shallower, have more vegetation, and the water's not moving as often. So I'm going to go down. I'm going to do a little dip netting, put that into my bucket, and then fill my bucket with a little water so my creatures have um, some water to keep moving around. So you can just kind of bring your net and it's okay to get um, pieces of algae or lakeweed. Um, creatures are gonna be hanging on to those as well. So you don't need to just worry about getting the water um, and going through and just kind of disturbing things, collecting it a little bit. So now that I have some collection, I'm gonna add some water to my bucket and bring that back up to check out what we found. So now that you've collected some specimens, some other important pieces of equipment you might wanna have that are easy to find around your house are an ice cube tray, um, some spoons, and potentially some eyedroppers to squeeze up those little critters. So now that I have my buckets of water, um, I've kind of spread them out between these two buckets and I'm just going in and starting to carefully move over some of the um, lakeweed and I'm starting to see some of the creatures that are moving. And so there's different ways you can try to do this, but sometimes using your dropper to collect your specimen and then putting it into your ice cube tray can be an option or you can try to collect it with your spoon um, and they're tricky because these little creatures are designed to move fast, to stay away from predators, so it might take a little bit of wrangling, but see what you can find in your own uh, collection. So after you've done your initial uh, grab for the bigger things that stand out, one way to find more diversity and more organisms and stuff in your, in your sample is to, to just leave it alone, keep your hands and your tools out of the bucket and just let everything settle and then bend down and really just sit and look. And you're just watching for movement. And you can often find some of the smaller organisms and also like some of our aquatic worms and some of our other little macros are clear almost and you're looking again you're looking for movement to see them 
in your sample here. So I've got lots of little zooplanktons, Daphnia and copepods. Okay. Whenever you're ready. So once you have your specimens and um, they are ready to be ID, you can use this really handy uh, key that was created by the University of Wisconsin and it identifies a lot of common macroinvertebrates found in Minnesota lakes and rivers or in the Wisconsin area. Um, so I have my specimen down here that I'm going to try to ID. And the first question it's asking me is, is this a shelled organism or does it have no shell? Well, looking by the pictures, I know that it does not have a shell. It is no shell and it, it doesn't have legs or no legs. And definitely this little critter has legs. So I move down and continue along the key, um, asking myself these questions as I move through. And when I find my way all the way down, um, I find that it has three tails and I have discovered a damselfly larvae. So this is a really great way to start to break down um, what you have found in your body of water and practice your ID right. stuff. Now that we have our sample from our survey and we've identified most of the macroinvertebrates that we found, we're going to use this uh, biotic index for water quality. It was also developed by the University of Wisconsin Extension Service um, for their stream health survey. Um, as Kelly said, the macroinvertebrate key can be for rivers, lakes, streams, and likewise, this biotic index was developed for streams and rivers and monitoring their health, and we've modified it to work for lakes as well. But just know that our most sensitive to pollution organisms are almost exclusively found in streams and rivers. And so if we found any of these in our sample, that would be kind of surprising. So if the fact that we're not finding them in here is, is perfectly normal, that we're not finding any of the most sensitive to pollutant organisms. So we're going to start here in group two with the semi-sensitive to pollutants. So these animals um, need to have fairly good oxygen levels in the water, very low levels of nitrates, phosphorus, other pollutants and stuff that can be found in our waterways. So even the fact that we're finding them can indicate that we have some pretty good health. So Kelly identified the damselflies. We know we have that one for sure. We also had see if I can find them here. Some dragonfly nymphs, some super itty bitty baby dragonflies. And what else? Do we have anything else from that category? I don't think so. So we have a total of two organisms from group two. Then we go down to semi-tolerant of pollutants. So just because we're finding organisms that are semi-tolerant or tolerant of pollutants doesn't mean necessarily that there is pollution in the water. It's just that if we were only finding those organisms, then we would be concerned that there was pollution. But any of these animals are perfectly happy to live in better quality water. So we had several kinds of snails and the snails you have to check on the shell shape and then also when you're looking at it which side the uh, operculum and the opening on the shell opens up to and this little buddy opens on the left as we're facing it and so that one actually belongs in the group four. It's a pouch snail. So they know we had a, here it is, here you, we have one of the um, guild snails that opens on the right. So you gotta check your little opening for your snails. We have that buddy. We also have the little, we had tons of scuds and lots of different sizes. And they kind of look like little green shrimp. 
and they're related to isopods and roly polies and those kinds of things that you can find on land. There's a bigger one in here, a little scud. They can get quite big. Um, so we did that one. And then we also have, I was super excited because we don't usually see them too often in our lakes. You got a leech. Let's see if it'll come out here. So we have lots of different kinds of leeches in Minnesota and a lot of people get kind of grossed out by them, but they're just doing their job. And actually a lot of them don't use mammals as hosts. And so it's going to stick on me, but it's not going to bite me and start sucking any blood or fluid or anything out. It's just going to crawl around on my finger there, but they're kind of fun to watch. And they stick that rear suction cup on to hold on, and then they'll go out exploring with their front end to go find whatever that they're looking for there. So it's kind of our cool little leech. Get back in there. Go down. Where's the leech? There it is. And then we had a couple of the aquatic worms that we can also circle on there. So I'll go back up here. Sorry, I forgot that. That's two. And that's three. And that one had zero. So then we're going to flip this over and transfer our numbers from our boxes over to here. So we had zero, two, two, and three. Zero times four is zero. Two times three is six. Two times two is four. And three times one is three and that gives us a total of 13 which we go on our index value which gives us fair water quality which is perfectly good and again this is from stream health surveys so streams by their nature have a lot more oxygen levels in them and so their water quality is therefore going to be a little bit higher than a lake which does not get quite as oxygenated as a stream so that's pretty good value for this lake. I think McDonough, the highest we've ever gotten is good. Um, again, because of the fact that it's based on stream uh, dynamics and stuff like that, um, it'd be pretty rare to get an excellent water quality with this survey on any of our lakes here. But just depends on what you got. And again, this is just one sample on one day. Um, if we're, we, do this with all of our uh, water quality classes. And so we have a range of different numbers that we have out there, but it's never gone below fair and it hovers between usually good and fair for our water quality. So that's how you do a macroinvertebrate index. Uh, thanks for joining us today for what's in the water. And we hope we gave you some helpful hints for exploring macros in a waterway near you. And we'll finish off today with uh, leaving you some footage of underwater and seeing if we can spot any of the little organisms we were looking at today or at least some of their predators with our sunfish and our bass out here in the lake. So thanks for joining us.